Islip Community Church and happy Easter one and all. It is so good to worship with you this morning from wherever you are. Friends, if you have been part of the Hazlitt Community Church community for many years, or you are with us this morning for the very first time, we're glad that you're here and you are part of our community. It is Easter morning. There is so much to be joyful about, even as we get used to worship in this new way. You heard music this morning already from Barbara Freeman and Rich Ilman. We have the choir, the Hazlitt Community Choir is going to join us this morning uh, in a safe way. Stay tuned. Pastor Aaron is part of worship this morning and you are part of worship this morning. Friends, let us continue to worship as we praise God and say, Christ is risen. Alleluia. Our call to worship this morning is a responsive one. When you hear the words and one word says it all, I invite you to reply with Alleluia, Jesus is risen. We call one another to worship. We thought the cross was the end. We thought that when the stone rolled over the tomb, that was it. But this is it. The cross is empty, the stone is rolled, there is life. And one word says it all. Alleluia, Jesus is risen. We thought you had said your final word. We thought those with power had won. We thought that when you cried out, that was it. But this is it. The word breathes. The powers are defeated. The final cry was only the beginning. And one word says it all. Alleluia, Jesus is risen. We thought that the story was finished. We thought that the hope had ended. We thought that when the tomb was sealed, 
that was it. But this is it. The story has just begun. The hope is newly born. The tune is empty. And one word says it all, Alleluia. Jesus is risen. This is the news. Jesus is risen. This is the movement. Jesus is alive. This is the gospel. Jesus is with us. We thought that when they crucified you, death had defeated life and that was it. But this is it. Love is stronger than death. And one word says it all. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. Friends, even as we celebrate this morning, we recognize that there is brokenness in this world. I invite you now into a prayer in recognition of the brokenness and the assurance of grace. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to the empty tomb. We see hurting before us in this world, and we know that collectively we share in that hurting. We come to the empty tomb. We search within ourselves, and we cannot escape that we can be caught up in the fear of the world, or trapped in our own sense of wrongdoing. For some, a deep sense of loneliness or a frustration of what we could be but are not. We come to the empty tomb and we lay before the living Christ our pain and our emptiness and look to Jesus for hope. People of God, our wounds are deep. The wounds of the world are deep. But we need not dwell in the hurting any longer. For Christ is risen and there is healing. For Christ is risen and there is grace. For Christ is risen and we are united by Christ's love and light. Thanks be to God. Amen. In response to this prayer, I invite you to join in singing Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say God's steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. The Lord has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. 
the right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has tested me severely, but he did not give me over unto death. Open to me the gates of the righteous, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. On Palm Sunday, for our children's moment, we started a book called Easter Love Letters from God. Each day we have read a different part of this book telling the story of the last week of Jesus life and today's children's moment will finish that story so enjoy Easter love letters from God the super surprise there was something special about the day the birds that lived in the trees above the quiet cave knew it they knew it when they opened their eyes that morning and saw the sunrise the sun peeked out over the horizon and it seemed to wink at the world, pinks and oranges, yellows and reds flooded the sky. Golden rays reached out like fingers toward the cave and twinkled as if they were holding a secret. The birds could feel an early morning whisper, a song gliding through the trees, and now the birds could hear it, a whisper that got louder as it danced. It was a name. A name carried on the wind, sailing through the leaves, rushing through the grass. The birds perked up and opened their beaks to join the chorus of all creation as every living thing sang the name, the name that is above any other name, Jesus. Jesus is alive. The big stone had been moved. The cave was empty. The sun was shining. Jesus, king of the whole world, was alive again. The trees clapped their hands. The flowers danced for joy. The birds flew high over the fields and carried the good news, the most wonderful news that the world has ever heard. Jesus is alive.
thank you to our wonderful Judy Conley and the Hazlitt Community Church Choir. We have missed seeing you and hearing you, so we're glad that we could uh, listen to you in this way this morning. Hear these words from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on, the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised, he is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. We give thanks to God for God's word. There are three kinds of people in the world. Those who will finish a movie, a book, or a TV series, whether they're enjoying it or not, because they just have to know how it ends. Or those who are totally okay dropping a book, movie, or TV series at any point when it loses their interest, or when something else steals their attention, they don't need to know the ending. Then there are those who prefer choose your own adventure books or the newer choose your own adventure Netflix shows that I'm just learning about. In these books and TV series, every once in a while in the storyline, there comes a crossroads and the reader or watcher gets to decide what the next step in the story will be. Will you choose something safe and comforting? Will you choose something daring and dangerous? Will you choose something exciting and unpredictable? It's up to you. You are choosing your own adventure. The end of the Gospel of Mark, Mark's account of the resurrection, sort of, which is what we just heard, is not designed for the first kind of people. Those who prefer an ending tied up with a neat bow if you are a person who always makes it to the very end of the story, you may have felt a bit unsatisfied by the Mark reading this morning. Where is the road to Emmaus or Thomas with his questions? Where is the commissioning of the disciples? Where is conversation with the visible, risen Christ? Many who hear Mark's account feel like it is designed for the second kind of person. Those who don't need an ending at all. Those who are okay walking away from a story left unfinished. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Dot, dot, dot. To be continued? Some were so uncomfortable with what they interpreted as an unfinished gospel that over the years endings were added on to the gospel of Mark, a shorter ending and later a longer one. Check it out in your Bibles at home. You'll see that additions were added not once, but twice. But when I read or hear Mark's telling of the resurrection, I don't hear a tidy ending or an unfinished one. I hear an invitation, an invitation to imagine, an invitation to imagine what Mary, Mary and Salome did after leaving the empty tomb. 
You see, the women in this story were not strangers to choosing a brave path. When others scattered, they stayed and watched as Christ was crucified. As others wandered away defeated, these three had already chosen to honor Christ by taking spices to the tomb. So are we to believe that even though they ran away, amazed and scared, that their original silence remained that way? In light of what they learned at the empty tomb, what adventure did they choose? And in Mark's telling of the resurrection, there is an invitation to us to decide. Just like the choices made and choose your own adventure narratives. An invitation to decide what would you do if you came upon Christ's empty tomb. An invitation to decide what you knowing that Christ is risen, that life conquers death that resurrection and new life is the way of the God we worship, even when we feel as those at the tomb did, scared, confused, or unsure of the future, means for the way we live our life today. And oh friends, if ever there was an opportunity to connect with feeling fear and uncertainty, this is certainly the Easter for that. We know as we've walked in unprecedented circumstances these last weeks, what it means to be unsure, to face the unknown, to feel varying degrees of uncertainty and fear. Those at the empty tomb felt those things too. But here we are. Easter is here. Christ is risen. Alleluia. The Gospel of Mark isn't unfinished. It is an opportunity, an invitation to choose our own adventure and choose faith even in the midst of the unknown. To choose resurrection even when there is fear in the world. To choose the hope and new life offered to us in Christ every day in good days and bad ones, knowing that Jesus has known joy and sorrow, but is risen. That is the adventure we choose. Frederick Buechner wrote, the grace of God means something like, here is your life. You might never have been, but you are because the party wouldn't have been complete without you. Here is the world, beautiful and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid, I am with you. Nothing can ever separate us. It's for you I created the universe. I love you. There's only one catch. Like any other gift, the gift of grace can be yours only if you'll reach out and take it. Maybe being able to reach out and take it is a gift too. Friends, Easter looks very different this year, but it is here still. Christ is risen and we are resurrection people, reaching out and grasping on to the life offered to us in this adventure that we have chosen. Reaching out and grasping the grace of God is the adventure we choose and living into the promise of the gospel of the risen Christ, even in difficult times, is the adventure we are on together. While apart, we are not alone. Let us continue the adventure together. Christ is risen. Alleluia.
Let us join our hearts in prayer. In the midst of their grief and confusion, you appeared to them. On the road, you appeared to them. At the water's edge, you appeared to them. Even though they doubted, even though they had betrayed and denied you, still you appeared to them, reassuring them of your presence with them and love for them. You appeared to them asking them to feed your sheep, to share your good news. You introduced them to the resurrection hope. We pray that in the midst of our grief and confusion on this oh so strange road that we find ourselves on now, that you might meet us too. On this Easter morning, may we again be reminded of your presence with us and your love for us. Call us again to be sharers of the good news, letting us once again be touched and moved by your resurrection hope. Though currently scattered, we come together, Lord, to praise you and pray the words you taught us, saying with one voice, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, it has been a joy to celebrate Easter with all of you this morning, wherever you are. After this benediction, we will uh, have the gift of hearing once again from our wonderful choir, directed by Judy Conley, and also some music by Barbara Freeman. Friends, continue to celebrate Easter throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the year. I look forward to worshiping with you in person hopefully soon. But until then, friends, let us continue to be with one another, even though we are apart. I leave you with these words of blessing. Go forth with renewed hope, trusting in the transforming love of God. God does not leave things as they are. With God, all things are made new. All creation responds to God's presence. The world is alive with possibility. We open ourselves to this truth. Nothing is beyond God's reach. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace.